give me some direction What's the light Cause I don't think I could take another sleepless night So take my hand and come with me And I'll show you the places that we were never meant to see Yeah, you get your A very good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Laurels here in Mullignacta, the home of Mullignacta, the Leinster Senior Club Champions of 2018. But this afternoon, it's the Intermediate Football Championship that we concentrate on here on Longford TV for the first time this year. Uh, already we've brought you a number of Senior Championship games, but this afternoon, Sean Connolly's take on Arda Maidu. And for Sean Connolly's, they're looking for a win or a draw that will guarantee them a place in the semi-finals of this year's my ladies intermediate football championship a big thank you to our sponsors of course uh, this afternoon longford tourism you saw the uh, ad just before we came live on air and uh, thank you indeed to all of our sponsors here bringing live streaming to the people of longford for the uh, longford senior and intermediate football championships now both teams have been out warming up for quite some time uh, here in the laurels uh, before we give you the teams let's uh, tell you about the referee for this afternoon the referee is Fergal Kelly from the Ballymahan Club and he's assisted by Ushin Horrican from Dromard and Tony Gaffney from Mostrom. That's the uh, the team of three in charge here in the Laurels this afternoon. Uh, let's look at the teams next and uh, Sean Connolly's who had a, a very good one point win over Cashel last weekend. They beat the South Longford uh, men 110 to 12 points and that one point win gives them two points and sees them sit on top of this group in the Intermediate Football Championship. Their team this afternoon afternoon in goals is Stephen Murtha, the full-back line of Patrick Reynolds, Sean O'Sullivan and Thomas Kyo. Half-backs Frank Reynolds, Des Reynolds and Gregory Masterson. Midfield Dara Duggan and Stephen Lynch. The half-forward line wearing number 10, John McKenna. At centre-forward wearing 25, Trevor Murtha. He comes in for number 11, Ronan McGrail. And uh, the other, the half-forward line is completed by number 24, Connor Blessington, who comes in for number 12, Evan Tully. And the Full forward line for Sean Connolly's. Kieran McKeown is in the corner. Joe Heaney is full forward. And Daniel Reynolds completes the 15 for the Balnally men. For Arda Moidu, they also make changes uh, this afternoon. Uh, let's give you their team. In goals is Brian Farrell. Uh, the full back line, wearing number 21, is Dominic Glennon. He comes in for Mark McCord. Uh, number three at full back is Tommy Powell. And the other cornerback, wearing four, is Dylan Riley. The half back line, number five. Fergal Keenan. Number six is Connor Carroll. And number seven is John Keegan. Midfield, number eight, Niall Keenan. And number nine, Paddy Keenan. The half forward line, number 17, Ronan Keane, replaces number 10, Kevin Finnan. At centre forward, number 11, Dylan Cody. And at number 12, Mark Thompson. And the full forward line, number 18, Killian Farrell, replaces number 13, Paddy Ganley. Emmett Donlan is at full forward. And Keen Finnan wears the number 15 jersey for the Arda Maidu men. So looking at the programme, it looked like the brothers Keen and Kevin would both start for Arda Maidu, but Ronan Keane comes in, as does Killian Farrell and Dominic Glennon. Uh, the management teams, uh, lots of interest in both of these as well, both former county players. Uh, for Arda Maidu, Niall Sheridan is the Arda Maidu manager this season, and uh, he's assisted by selectors Frank Doyle, James Farrell and Porrick Keane, and of course uh, Niall Sheridan, no strangers to followers of Gaelic football in Longford one of the top Longford full forwards uh, over the last 20-30 years and uh, certainly Niall Sheridan uh, also established as uh, a well known and respected manager uh, in County Longford having taken charge of Granard for a number of years in recent times. So Sheridan is the manager for Arda Moidu and uh, his opposing number uh, the manager for Sean Connolly's is Seamus Quinn of course the former Leitrim player who was uh, a member of the victorious Leitrim team that 
that won the 1994 Connacht Senior Football Championship, beating Mayo in that final. Seamus Quinn played at full back and indeed picked up an all-star as well. So plenty of experience behind both managers uh, this afternoon. And uh, indeed, uh, both teams uh, uh, now, one team, I should say, out on the pitch. Not sure where Sean Connolly's have gone to. Certainly, in fact, they're, they're gone hiding into a corner uh, to get their jerseys on. Uh, but no sign of them to emerge yet out onto the pitch. Uh, Arda do are out there and uh, practicing lots of shooting uh, ahead of this, uh, I suppose, very important clash for them in the Intermediate Football Championship. A win for them would set them up nicely as they face Cashel next weekend in the last group game. But a win or a draw for Sean Connolly's, as I mentioned, will put them straight through the, to the semi-finals of the Intermediate Football Championship. Now, some very interesting games uh, this weekend in the Senior Football Championship. On Friday night, a huge win for Father Manning Gales over Carrick Edmund, uh, winning 112 to 12 points. Now, unfortunately for Drumlish, they lost their opening game to Longford Slashers by 14 points. Uh, so they are now relying on Longford Slashers to do them a favour next weekend against Carrick Edmund. A draw or a win for Longford Slashers will ensure Drumlish's passage to the quarterfinals of the championship. However, a win by any margin uh, would assure Carrick Edmund of their place in the last eight. But but uh, for Longford Slashers, they will have to lose by 13 points in order to lose out on their passage to the quarterfinals. But good to see that group still alive with just one match remaining. And uh, also last night, uh, Molyneux had uh, a very good win against uh, Rathcline. They advanced to the quarterfinals. They're now on three points. Colm Kill play Rathcline next weekend in that group. And a win for either side would see them qualify for the quarterfinals. Uh, but... Uh, that's all to look forward to uh, next weekend. Colum Kill, a draw will suffice for them to make it into the last eight. And in the final group, perhaps the shock of the championship so far. A big win for Granard last night over Abby Lara. Uh, the final score, 1-12 uh, to 1-6. That game was played in C&D Divine Park in Edgerstown. 1-12 to 1-6 for Granard. They trailed 1-3 to a point after the first quarter, but outscored uh, their more vaunted opposition, you might I'd say 111 to three points in the remaining three quarters of that game. And Granard are the only team from that group who have already qualified for the quarterfinals of the championship. The other game uh, next weekend between Dramard and Abilar will see Dramard needing a draw uh, to advance to the quarterfinals. A win for Abilar would see them advance with Granard at the expense of Dramard. So that's the action uh, from this weekend in the senior championship. We're just a couple of minutes away uh, from the afternoon's action getting underway here in the Intermediate Championship in the Laurels. Referee Fergal Kelly is in the centre of the pitch uh, already. He'll be soon calling both captains to the centre of the field. Delighted to be bringing you this live coverage from the Laurels of the Intermediate Football Championship. The captain for Sean Conley's is their number six, Des Reynolds. Of course, uh, Des, a county player, uh, a very, very fine player, and he'll be one of the players that Sean Conley's will be looking to this afternoon for inspiration against a very experienced uh, Arda Maidu side. And uh, both captains in the centre of the field with the referee, Fergal Kelly. <laughs> Issuing instructions to both captains and now tossing to see which way each side will play. And uh, Connolly's have decided to play from left to right. Not very much wind, a little bit of breeze perhaps favouring Sean Connolly's uh, in this uh, first half as the Sean Connolly's team make their way out onto the pitch. Let's uh, give you the teams once again. Let's begin with Sean Connolly's. For them, a much shorter journey this afternoon, just uh, five or six miles down the road from the parish of Banlalee. They've made their way up to the Laurels, and this is the team they've brought with them. In goals, uh, number one, Stephen Murtha, the full back line, number two, Patrick Reynolds, number three, Sean O'Sullivan, and number four, Thomas Kyo. The half back line, number five, Frank Reynolds, number six, Des Reynolds, the captain, and number seven, Gregory Masterson. Midfield, number eight, Dara Duggan, and number nine, Stephen Lynch. The half forward line, wearing ten, John McKenna, wearing 25, Trevor Murtha, and wearing 24, Connor Blessington. And the full forward line, 
Number 13, Kieran McKeown. 14 on his back has Joe Heaney. And uh, completing the Sean Connolly's team, number 15, Daniel Reynolds. Arda Maidu and goals, Brian Farrell. Full back line, Dominic Glennon, Tommy Powell and Dylan Riley. Half backs, Fergal Keenan, Connor Carroll and John Keegan. Midfield, Niall Keenan and Paddy Keenan. Half forward line, Ronan Keane, Dylan Cody and Mark Thompson. And the full forward line, Killian Farrell, Emmett Donlan and Keen Finnan. The action underway here at the Laurels. Arda Maidu clearing their lines with their centre back Connor Carroll plays uh, a fist pass over toward the far side of the field and it's now with uh, Emmett Donlan they're full forward <laughs> Donlan playing it into Dylan Riley Riley looking for a cross field pass but uh, who's going to get there first it's won by Arda Maidu it's with their number 17 that's Ronan Keane still Keane but he loses possession at the vital time and Sean Connolly's uh, can come away with possession <laughs> Stephen Lynch lays it off over to this near side, Frank Reynolds in possession for Sean Connolly's. Looks inside for the waiting number 25, Trevor Murtha. Murtha gives it back to Stephen Lynch. Lynch over the far side. That's a good looking ball towards Des Reynolds. He's playing anywhere except centre forward in the opening minutes here this afternoon. He Reynolds looks up. Reynolds kicks. Has he found the target? If he has, it's a wonderful score. He has indeed. That's a cracking point from Desi Reynolds. And Sean Connolly's take the lead here at the Laurels. Kick out is taken. It's uh, short enough, but it's uh, not a good one. It's one back by Frank Reynolds. He started well, very well for the Connolly's men. Into Trevor Murta, another man who's seen the action a couple of times in these opening exchanges. Gives the ball, lays it back outside to Connor Blessington. Inside once more, back with Blessington from John McKenna. The referee is stopping play because Frank Reynolds, uh, who started very brightly uh, for Sean Connolly's, he's on the ground. We're going to look back at that last point. You just look at that kick from Desi Reynolds, high up into the air. Uh, but he knew what he was doing, a huge kick from Reynolds over the bar. And uh, Sean Connolly's leading by a point to no score. But uh, the other Reynolds, Frank Reynolds, who, as I said, had started very brightly for Sean Connolly's, is down, uh, as you can see, receiving attention. Let's hope he can get back to his feet uh, fairly soon. Don't think it's a... Fr And uh, just, just three minutes, just three minutes gone on the watch here. Three points to no score. To, uh, one point to no score, I should say, in favour of Sean Connolly's. Referee Fergal Kelly is happy that uh, Frank Reynolds uh, is able to resume. But as I said, no free, just a possession for Sean Connolly's. Reynolds certainly seems to be uh, hurting badly. He must have fallen awkwardly on his back. He has started brightly for Sean Connolly's, and certainly they won't, won't want to be making changes so early in this game. And uh, a super point from Des Reynolds, the difference between the sides. <laughs> After almost five minutes of action, but already we'll have a stoppage, we know, at the end of the first half for injuries because uh, we've uh, we stopped play about two minutes now. We'll have a water break to add to that. So expect perhaps at this stage at least 33, perhaps 34 minutes uh, to be played. Frank Reynolds is coming off. That's a big blow for the Connolly's men. And Eugene Murta makes his way onto the pitch. The number 23 for Sean Connolly's. So possession for Connolly's. They can't go for a score from this ball. Is played into the danger zone. Fine piece of fielding inside there by Des Reynolds. And he's been pulled and dragged. And Reynolds gets the free. Free in to Sean Connolly's. Just about 21 yards from goal. So a glorious opportunity. I think for Daniel Reynolds to pop this one over and double the Sean Connolly's men's lead. And that he has done. So six minutes on the watch. And Sean Connolly's leading here. 
Two points to no score. Kick out from Brian Farrell. Two Connolly's men run into each other. That's a nasty collision, particularly for the number 14, Joe Heaney, who's on the ground holding his knee. And uh, certainly it was uh, completely accidental. Two Sean Connolly's men colliding with each other. But Joe Heaney is still on the ground, wrenching in pain and holding his right leg. Let's have a look at that again. You can, oh, you can just see where the two men collided. And certainly Joe Heaney has come off much the worse for wears after that clash. And uh, Sean Connolly's already having had to make one substitute with uh, Eugene Murthy coming in for Frank Reynolds. Heaney is back on his feet, but uh, he's the worst for wears and limping badly on his right leg. But uh, he might be able to run this one off. And the game will resume. Paddy Keenan with the possession for Arda Maidu. Plays it inside and gets it back. Paddy Keenan racing through. This is a good run from Keenan. Looks across the centre. Great ball inside. Chance of uh, a shot, perhaps, but no. Killian Farrell still in possession. Gets it outside to Keen Finnan. Cuts inside. He's pulled down. Is it a penalty or is it a free? But certainly, Keen Finnan was pulled to ground. Might be just outside the larger parallelogram. It'll be a free in for the Arda Moidu men. They trail by two points to no score. And, and a chance now for them to narrow the gap to just one point. So far, the rain has steered clear of the laurels here in Molognacta. Picturesque setting for the Intermediate Championship, and that one is kicked over by Dylan Cody. First point of the afternoon for the Arda Maidu men. Sean Connolly's still leading by two points to one. And Stephen Murtha will take this kick out. His first time following a score to take a kick out this afternoon. The first score of the game for the Arda Maidu men, won by Key and Finnan and uh, converted by Dylan Cody. Kick out, not a good one, won by Trevor Murtha once more. He's been very busy for Sean Connolly's. Wasn't selected to start, uh, but he's done very well on this occasion and has done very well so far in this game. Connolly's go on the attack again. Trying to retain possession is Daniel Reynolds. Scored their second point from a free just a few minutes ago. Plays the ball inside towards Desi who I assume is his brother. Desi Reynolds is fouled once more. Looked a little bit soft, but uh, Reynolds won't mind. Referee Fergal Kelly uh, judging that uh, there were hands uh, all over the shoulders of Desi Reynolds. And now he's bringing it in for descent. The number eight for Arda Maidu, Niall Keenan, not happy with the referee's decision. So Des Reynolds, when he gets his boot back on, will have an opportunity to extend Sean Connolly's lead to three points to one. Although, also I see Stephen Lynch uh, coming up to uh, pick up the ball, so perhaps Stephen Lynch will take this one. Two points to one. Sean Connolly's lead, and now looking to extend that lead to three. Ah, that's a very nice kick indeed uh, from Lynch. Very good free kick. And Sean Connolly's extend their lead to three points to one. So this game really has of yet to come to life. But nonetheless, we've seen some good scores. In particular, the game's opening score from Desi Reynolds. Desi Murta plays it inside towards Joe Heaney. He seems none the worse for wears after that uh, collision a few moments ago. Back to Trevor Murta once more. Good ball for Murta towards his namesake, Desi. I don't know what the whistle was for. But uh, in any case, he didn't catch it, so the mark isn't allowed. Ball is played into the danger zone once more, but there are three Arda Maidu men under that one. One of those is Fergal Keenan, and Arda Maidu clear their lines. Mark Thompson lays it outside. Led down the line towards Dylan Cody. Good interchange of football from Arda Maidu. It's now with Emmett Donlan. Donlan, perhaps a little bit slow to release, finds Key and Finnan. 
key incident, racing down the right hand side, gets away from his man and uses his man somehow coming through to collide, go to ground and get the free and a chance for Arda Maidu to narrow the gap once more to three points to two. A very bright start for Key and Finnan. He spent a number of years uh, with Longford Slashers but uh, transferred back to Arda Maidu a couple of seasons ago. He started very, very brightly for Arda Maidu. Three points to one Sean Connolly's lead. But if Dylan Cody can knock over his second free, albeit a little bit more difficult than the previous one, we'll be back to a one-point game. That's not going over the bar. And the referee... In fact, it was the umpire who said that that one has gone out to the left and wide. And so the score remains three points to one in favour of Sean Connolly's. And Stephen Murtha, perhaps the busier of the two goalkeepers in the last five minutes, despite the fact that his team are leading by three points to one. Let's see Connolly's build from the back and extend their lead. Martha's kick out. Paddy Keenan knocks it down, but only as far as Gregory Masterson, the Sean Connolly's number seven. Ball is played into the centre to Sean O'Sullivan. Very good ball from Sean O'Sullivan towards Daniel Reynolds, who decides to take the mark. And he's obviously confident. He's about 40 metres out from goal. Confident that uh, he has the ability and the range to put this one over the bar. It was a brilliant ball from Sean O'Sullivan. And that's a brilliant kick from Daniel Reynolds, his second point of the afternoon. And now Sean Connolly's do lead by three points, four points to one. Brilliantly executed score. Brilliant ball from Sean O'Sullivan. Terrific mark from Daniel Reynolds. And the resulting free kick was equally good. Sean Connolly's lead by four points to one. Niall Keenan plays it out towards Dominic Glennon. Dominic, of course, the former Slashers man, now playing with Arda Maidu. One back by Sean Connolly's. Dara Duggan, strong man, is pulled to ground. He'll get the free. Free kick is hoisted into the danger zone. Could break for Joe Heaney here. Dominic Lennon tries to get it into his hands and the referee says when the Connolly's number six was going for it, that was Desi Reynolds. He got a kick uh, when he was getting the ball into his possession and the referee awards another uh, tap over free, you might say, to the Sean Connolly's men. They already lead by four points to one. And while Arda might do have a plenty of possession in the uh, opening, what, I suppose 15 minutes or so, it's certainly been Sean Connolly's who have made the most of it on the scoreboard. They lead by four points to one. And a chance for Stephen Lynch to knock over his second score, which he does quite easily. And now it's five points to one in favour of Sean Connolly's. Uh, an opening score from Desi Reynolds and then four frees, two apiece from Stephen Lynch and Daniel Reynolds. That's the total for Sean Connolly's. For Arda Maidu, a poor start. They'll need to get into this game fairly quickly. The ball is knocked down. But well, it's gone out over the line. It'll be a line ball to Arda Maidu, which uh, Dominic Lennon, I think, will take. Referee not happy that Joe Heaney has kicked the ball away. And Arda Maidu will gain a couple of yards. The referee asking him to move the ball forward. But in the end, they take it from the original spot because they're guaranteed possession. Ball played through the centre. Fergal Keenan. Good ball. That's a great cross-field pass towards Dylan Cody, who's done very well. Ball played again towards the danger man, Keen Finnan. Beautiful knock-on from Finnan towards the uh, number 18, Killian Farrell. That's a wonderful kick from Killian Farrell. That's more like it from an art of perspective. And Killian, Killian Farrell gets his first point uh, of the afternoon. And, and now we're back to a three-point game, five points to two. Just look at it again. Beautiful flick from Kean Finnan and an equally good kick from Killian Farrell over the bar and we're now back to a three point game Sean Connolly's leading Arda Maidu by five points to two Stephen Martha 
Again, Connolly's win the break. And again, it's Trevor Murta. He's been extremely busy for Connolly's in the opening quarter of this game as we approach the first half water break. Stephen Lynch, two points from freeze to his credit. Plays one in towards Desi Reynolds, but Desi can't get to that one. It's gone harmlessly out over the end line. And it'll be a goal kick once more uh, for the Arda Moidu man, which uh, Brian Farrell uh, is in a rush to take. But uh, in the end, has to slow it down. And he'll be looking to find one of his uh, his teammates and build from the back. And that teammate is Dominic Lennon. Dominic Lennon plays it inside to Paddy Keenan. Down the line from Paddy Keenan towards uh, the ever-busy Keen Finnan, who's really proving a handful for Patrick Reynolds uh, here this afternoon. It'll be a free to Arda Moidu. It'll be on the 45-metre line. And uh, Keen Finnan certainly showing that he means business here this afternoon. Really bright start from the number 15. Fouled for the first score for Sean Connolly's. And laid off for the second one. Still Finnan. Goes to ground again. And in the end, uh, Patrick Reynolds pulls Emmett Donlan to the ground. Will the referee, Fergal Kelly, take action? He's talking to Trevor Murtha. Although, in fairness, uh, Patrick Reynolds uh, didn't look too innocent either. Free kick to Arda Maidu, taken quickly. Dropped by Dylan Cody, but he gets it back. He does really well to dispossess Sean O'Sullivan, who has started brightly for Sean Connolly's. Killian Farrell, but the referee has spotted something off the ball. He awards a free to the yard of my do men. Killian Farrell's shot had dropped short. But a free for Arda Maidu. And again, it'll be on the 45-metre line. And again, it'll be in the range of Paddy Keenan. Paddy asks Keenan Finnan, does he want to have a go? But uh, Keenan says, no, you take it, Paddy. And in the end, another incident inside, another piece of jersey pulling, and all of a sudden the free becomes much more scorable for the Sean Connolly's men. Referee Fergal Kelly penalising, I think it was the Sean Connolly's number four, uh, Thomas Kyo, for a tug on the jersey of Killian Farrell. And the job now made much easier for a different free taker, Dylan Cody. It was to be Paddy Keenan taking it from the 45, but Dylan Cody taking the free kicks closer to goal. Five points to two as we speak. It should be five points to three in only a matter of seconds. And the free kick is slotted over by Dylan Cody. Three points for the Arda, my do men. They now only trail by two, having trailed by four. They've upped their game somewhat in the last six or seven minutes. Referee having a word uh, with the umpire down on the left-hand side of the pitch, but uh, I think he's only getting some water on board, and that is the uh, the water break at the end of the first quarter. It was, uh, I suppose you could say, a quarter of two halves. The first half of the opening quarter dominated by Sean Connolly's. Uh, they got into a five points to one lead. Desi Reynolds uh, firing over a cracking opening score for them, and then a couple of frees apiece uh, for both Daniel Reynolds, uh, the second second in particular a beauty from out near the 45 metre line after he received a superb ball from Sean O'Sullivan two points for Daniel Reynolds and also two points from Freeze as well for Stephen Lynch that established a five points to one lead uh, for Sean Connolly's after about nine minutes of the action uh, but it's uh, fair to say that the last six minutes have been dominated by Arda Moidu and uh, Dylan Cody with a couple of points and Killian Farrell also with one their contributors uh, in the first quarter and uh, certainly the last two scores very important as Arda do now the gap from four points to just two five points to three and referee Fergal Kelly blows his whistle to inform both sets of players it's time to get back out onto the field and uh, you know I think this quarter break is, is a really good thing in Gaelic football it, it uh, compartmentalises the game I, I suppose you could say into four different quarters and uh, I suppose allows teams to target each particular quarter in a different way. 
last first quarter was uh, shared not quite equally, but shared by both sides. Uh, Arda might do dominating for the opening nine or ten. Or I should say Sean Connolly's dominating for the opening nine or ten, and then Arda might do taking over for the remainder of the quarter. Five points to three, and play will resume with a kick out for the Sean Connolly's men. Dylan Cody's score before the water break, the last action of the first quarter. And Stephen Murtha in no hurry at all to take this kick. Still placing it on the ground. kicked out towards the middle of the field by the Connolly's goalkeeper. It's held by a Connolly's man. Uh, that man is Dara Duggan, who lays it back to his midfield playing partner, Stephen Lynch, scorer of two points in the first quarter. But that ball from Lynch, will it be kept in play? It will. By Arda Maidu. Dominic Glennon is fouled. And the man who has uh, a couple of senior medals with Longford Slashers. Wins the free for Arda Maidu, who go on the attack very quickly. They've certainly improved things dramatically in the last uh, seven or eight minutes. Here's Keen Finnan looking for support. It arrives in the form of uh, John Keegan. Back inside. Lovely ball inside towards Niall Keenan. And a great score for the Arda Maidu men, who I, I suppose it's fair to say, without a game last weekend, uh, were a little bit rusty in the opening quarter, but they've upped their game considerably and they've narrowed uh, five points to one deficit back to five points to four. Martha once again with the kick out. All the kick outs going over to that left side towards uh, Stephen Lynch. But Arda might do have it again. Sweater number 12, Mark Thompson. Lays it back outside. Paddy Keenan inside to Killian Farrell. Turns inside. Support arriving in the form of Paddy Keenan. And that perhaps is the score of the game from an Ardham I do perspective. A first point for Paddy Keenan. We're just uh, two minutes in after the resumption of the first water break and Arda Maidu are back on level terms. They've scored the last four points of the game and that one a particularly brilliant score from Paddy Keenan. Sides are level. This game really warming up and uh, if it stays as tight as this, we should be in for a ding-dong second half here in the Laurels, home ground of Mullignacta, the 2018 Leinster Club champions. Dominic Glennon wins clean possession for Arda Maidu down this left-hand side. Plays a very good ball inside to it's held by Killian Farrell. Farrell is fouled on the ground. Wants to take the free kick quickly. Great looking ball inside towards Emmett Dolan. What a goal for Arda Maidu. What a goal. What a ball. Great ball inside. You could just see the in-rushing Emma Dallin crashing the ball to the back of the net. Nothing Stephen Murtha could do about that. And Sean Connolly's are all of a sudden gone three points behind. A seven-point swing in the last seven minutes of football where Arda Maidu have scored 1-4 without reply to go from a 5-1 deficit to a 1-5 to five-point lead. And they're really rampant at the moment. Here's Paddy Keegan, Keenan down the right-hand side. Plays it inside once more towards Emmett Donlan. Into the centre towards Ronan Keane. Ronan Keane lays it off, but uh, referee Fergal Kelly said that uh, he didn't lay it off in time. It'll be a, a free kick for the Sean Connolly's men. And it's kicked straight out over the line by Dara Duggan, and a lot of frustration among the Sean Connolly's players. Just another look at uh, one of the Sean Connolly scores, or at the Arda Maidu scores. Great ball there to Paddy Keenan, who uh, kicks a wonderful score. That put them level, and then, of course, the goal has them leading by three points. But here come uh, Sean Connolly's in the form of Desi Reynolds. He's got the pace to run at the Arda Maidu defence. Still Desi Reynolds in possession. 
Desi looks up, puts a dangerous looking ball into the center where it's spilled, but it's won by goalkeeper Brian Farrell. Farrell is blocked down. Connollys have possession back. Farrell was lucky there that the consequences weren't worse for the for the Arda Baidu men. Trevor Murta has a pot from way out, but that's gone way left and way wide. And frustration continues for Sean Connollys. They were in a fantastic position, leading by five points to one. But they've conceded the last goal and four points and haven't scored themselves. And now they find themselves three in arrears. Referee has blown the whistle. The Connolly's number 24, Connor Blessington, thought all his Christmases had come at once when he got possession and just uh, the goals and Brian Farrell in front of him. But the referee then blew the whistle. I don't know what way the free is. I can only assume that it must be a free to Ardham, I do. Uh, because if it wasn't, then he shouldn't have stopped the play. But uh, this time it's uh, an Ardham I do player in receipt of attention for the opening quarter. The two men that went down injured were both from Sean Connolly's. Frank Reynolds was forced off injured. He was replaced by Eugene Murtha. Joe Heaney got himself back to his feet. But uh, this Ardham I do man looks in serious bother. It's their full back, Tommy Powell. And I think Powell is going to have to leave the field. And certainly looks that way. Uh, getting the support of a couple of uh, Sean, of, of uh, Arda Maidu selectors. But it is a possession for Sean Connolly's, and uh, I can only imagine that uh, the referee blew it, uh, perhaps fearing a head injury or something like that. But uh, strange that he stopped play. Uh, just as Conor Blessington was uh, about to run towards goal. But it is a free kick to Sean Connolly's and a chance for them to get something from this latest attack. Ball played in by Stephen Lynch. Connolly's have. Back with Stephen Lynch once more. Chance for Heaney who shoots and he's put it over the bar. And Connolly's, if ever a team needed a score, Connolly's needed that one. Just have a look at it again. Good play, ball knocked outside uh, to Joe Heaney, who slots it over the crossbar. Ardham do in possession. I think it's Shane Henry who's come in. Has come in for uh, Tommy Powell there. Shane Henry, wearing number 20. Ardham do go on the attack once more. About six minutes of normal time remaining in this first half. Ball played inside, a brilliant win from Killian Farr, out in front of his man, puts his hand up in the air after the referee Fergal Kelly blew his whistle, accepts the mark, and now a chance for Killian Farr to once again extend the lead of Arda Maidu, and I think that one has gone to the left and wide. And uh, that's a lucky let off for Sean Connolly's. I think uh, the body language of Killian Farrell would, would suggest that he would have taken it if he was given it. But I think he knew as soon as he kicked it that perhaps that one was just slightly left and wide. He's still appealing with the umpire, but I think he knows himself. The appeals would be far greater, I think, if he was absolutely certain that his kick had gone over the bar. Stephen Murtha. Certainly has been the busier of the two goalkeepers for the last 15 minutes or so. He'll take the kick out once more and again he goes out towards the left-hand side of midfield. That's a wonderful catch uh, by the Arda Moidu, number 24, who I think is Kean Hartman. We'll come back to that in a moment. The ball is played in towards Killian Farrell. Breaks out for Dylan Cody. Still Dylan Cody plays a good ball over towards Shane Henry. Henry plays it inside. It's with Mark Thompson who turns and shoots. And this time it's gone to the right and wide. So two lucky let offs for Sean Connolly's. They have narrowed the gap to two points, one five to six points. And for Sean Connolly's, it's Sean Kenny, who's the latest player onto the pitch. Not sure as yet who's left. We'll tell you that as soon as we do know. In fact, it's the number two, Patrick Reynolds. 
has been taken off. It wasn't on a yellow card, but uh, he did pull an Ardham I do player to the ground in a passage of play about uh, four or five minutes ago. And perhaps the uh, Connolly's mentor saying this man needs to be careful. Let's bring on somebody who hasn't been warned or spoken to or watched by the referee. Ball is kicked out towards the middle of the field. It's won again by by uh, Ardham I do. Free kick awarded by the referee Fergal Kelly. Paddy Keenan takes the kick. It's towards Ronan Keane, but it's eventually won by Conor Carroll, who gives it back to Ronan Keane. Now, is there anyone in support for Keane? He races through the centre, lays it off towards uh, Killian Farrell once more. Back, oh, back across the face of goal. Ardham, I do sing, there was a push. The umpire signalling the ball wide, and referee Fergal Kelly. Uh, let's have a look at that again, because it looked like it, it was a push in the back, but uh, did the Ardham I do man make the most of it? The ball came across the goal from Kelly and Farrell. Oh, yes, you could argue uh, that uh, there was a case for a penalty there, but in the end, the ball is signalled wide, and that's another lucky let off for Sean Connolly's, because if Ardham I do had taken two soft chances. And that goal chance, uh, they'd be leading by uh, six or seven points, but as it stands, they lead by two. Ardham, I do one five. Sean Connolly, six points as we approach the closing minutes of the first half. Stephen Murtha with the kick out once more. It's gone out over the line on the far side of the field. Indeed, uh, Niall Sheridan thought it had, but uh, the linesman hadn't got his flag up. That's the important instrument, I suppose, the linesman's flag, and Sean Connolly's retained possession. Eugene Murta playing it outside towards Sean Kenny. Still Sean Kenny for the Ballina Lee men. Nobody supporting him, nothing but a sea of Ardham I do men in front of him, and in the end he kicks it out harmlessly to the right and wide. He was given lots of time and lots of space, but when he looked up for an option, none of his teammates uh, were looking to support him. And in the end, the latest effort from Sean Kenny and for Sean Connolly's has gone out to the right and it's gone wide. Brian Farrell with the kick out once more. Another super kick towards uh, Dominic Clennon, who wanted to take the mark, but the referee didn't blow his whistle. Ball is played inside to Ronan Keane. Ronan Keane loses possession. Rather tamely, it must be said, and Sean Connolly's a chance to break once more. Ball is played inside towards Daniel Reynolds. Almost went to ground, but uh, stays on his feet. Plays it inside to Stephen Lynch. Connolly's to score before half time. Ball is played back to the other midfielder, Dara Duggan. Dara looks up and kicks, and that one is a high searching ball. Could be dangerous. Well dealt with by Brian Farrell in the yard of my two goal. He gives the ball to Dominic Glennon. Glennon is pulled to ground by Stephen Lynch, and the referee will award a free out to the yard of my two men. And he'll also speak to Stephen Lynch, the big Sean Connolly's number nine. Not sure if he's going to issue a card. He's calling them back, perhaps. He will, but he's taken the name of the uh, of the Sean Connolly's number nine, Stephen Lynch. There's the yellow card to follow, and uh, Lynch will have to be careful for the remainder of this game. Another tackle like that, and he'll leave the field. Here comes uh, Dylan Riley for Adam I do. Plays the ball inside towards Niall Keenan. Scored a very good point earlier in the half. Back outside once more to Dylan Riley. Adam I do contrive to lose possession, however. Oh, that's a dangerous one. That's a dangerous tackle. And referee Fergal Kelly. Well, if he booked Stephen Lynch. He'll surely do the same to Killian Farrell because that was a much more dangerous tackle from Killian. We respect, I know he didn't mean it and his momentum took him through, but uh, that's the nature of football. Sometimes when you try too hard, you make mistakes. Killian Farrell becomes the second man to be booked here this afternoon. One for each side. Sean Kenny dispossessed. Very well played, Connor Carroll. Shane Henry plays it inside towards John Keegan. Did he take two bounces with that? In the end, it's a high tackle and it's a free to Ardham I do, which uh, John Keegan wants to take very quickly. Referee doesn't award the mark for some reason, perhaps because it was from a free. I think a mark must come from open play. Killian Farr was looking for that mark, but it wasn't from open play, so he couldn't take it. 
Sean Connolly's had possession back. Haven't seen much from Desi Reynolds in the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Here's uh, Daniel, who I assume is his brother, yes. younger brother Daniel, is pulled to ground, is he? Referee says play on. Uh, Eugene Murta chasing after this one, but he'll not be able to keep that one in play. It'll be a line ball to the Arda Maidu men. And uh, Sean Connolly's might feel a little bit aggrieved, perhaps, that they didn't get a free on this occasion. In the end, it's a line ball for Arda Maidu. <laughs> Connor Carl retains possession, gets it inside once more to John Keegan. He's come into the game a lot in the last few minutes as Keegan plays a good ball down this near side towards Key and Finnan. Finn and Jinx one way, then the other. Looking for support, none arriving. Finds it eventually, but doesn't find it. It's won back uh, by Sean Connolly's scrappy play from Arda Maidu in possession. And a chance for Sean Connolly's perhaps to break and get another very important score before half time. Here's their full back, the very impressive Sean O'Sullivan. Good stride on the big number three. Plays the ball inside once more, sensibly retaining possession. Daniel Reynolds is pulled to, to ground by the Arda Maidu number five, Fergal Keane. And Daniel Reynolds certainly not happy with that. That's the second or third time that the uh, number 15 has been grounded. Referee Fergal Kelly coming over to have a word with the uh, linesman on this near side, Ushin Hurricane from the Dramard Club. And will Fergal decide to take action? That is the question. He has already taken action by awarding a free to the Sean Connolly's men. But will he take further action by booking one of the Arda Maidu defenders? And again, the referee is coming back over to the linesman because I think he's forgotten which number to book. And in the end, nothing happens of it. It'll be a, a free kick to Sean Connolly's uh, and a chance for Stephen Lynch to get his third fine free of the afternoon. He scored two beauties already. And his side will only be one point in arrears at half time if Stephen Lynch can pop this one over the bar. It's about 42 metres out from goal. Again, he's got a lovely style, lovely kick. And that's another point for the Sean Connolly's men. One five to seven. Three excellent frees from Stephen Lynch in this first half. Two good frees also from Daniel Reynolds and a super opening score from Desi Reynolds. That's the contributors for Sean Connolly's. Kick out. Prote possession is retained. And in the end, the linesman said it's a line ball to Arda Moidu. Dominic Lennon will take the uh, line ball for the yard of my two men. He was on the line when he kicked that ball. But it won't matter because there is the uh, half-time whistle. And uh, lots of niggle going on in the latter stages of this half as uh, one of the Sean Connolly's management team, Kieran Fox, making his way out onto the pitch. Not sure if he's going to have a word with the referee or what he's going to say, but certainly... Uh, if we just keep an eye on the screen, you will see Kieran Fox there uh, moving up to speak with the referee, Fergal Kelly, as if to say, why did you not book perhaps the Arda Maidu man there before half time? But in any case, Fox walks away quite happy, and he should be happy because his side are just a point in arrears. They're led by five points to one, uh, I suppose, after about 10 minutes of the action. But since the 10th minute, it's been really all Arda Maidu. And if they'd taken their chances, they could be out of sight. But they haven't taken their chances. They've taken some of them, and they lead at half time. It's Arda Maidu, 1 5, Sean Connolly, 7 points. And we'll be back in a few minutes with all the action from the second half.
Okay, so welcome back to the Laurels, the second half of this uh, Longford Intermediate uh, Championship game about to get underway. Linesman Tony Gaffney is the man in front of our camera, just uh, making his way to this uh, near sideline. As of yet, Sean Connollys have not re-emerged from the bushes. <laughs> But uh, I can see them now making their way back, back out onto the pitch. They're uh, congregating in a, in a huddle over behind us on the right-hand side under a big tree. I'd say they've had plenty to say in this first half. Plenty to say from their management. And just to mention, if you're listening to our stream here this afternoon from the Laurels, that later this evening at 6.30, Clungish versus Mostrum in the last senior game of the weekend. And that'll be streamed live here on Longford TV. Book in now, five euro for top quality coverage. As you can see, the Sean Connolly's boys are back out on the pitch. The half-time position here, Arda Maidu leading by a point, 1-5 to 7 points. They perhaps should be further in front, but after being 5-1 down, I'm sure they'll settle for that. Connolly's will also settle for the fact that they were 5-1 up and totally outplayed for the last quarter and now only trailed by a point at half-time. Trevor Murta can't get the ball up into his hands. Shane Henry on this near side. There's a ball over the top, which uh, will be chased after by Gregory Masterson for Sean Connolly, who gets there first. Dara Duggan. Good ball from Duggan towards Eugene Murta. Murta looking for support to arrive. Goes back, recycles, retains possession. The ball is booted in, however, by Gregory Masterson. And a very good take there from Joe Heaney. A very good take from the big number 14. chance for Joe Heaney to get his second point of the day but that's a poor kick from Heaney never really got his boot around that one always stayed out right and a good chance uh, for the Connolly's men goes a begging in the opening minute of this second half <laughs> one five for Arda the goal scored by Emmett Donlan as Brian Farrell, their goalkeeper, kicks out, but it's won again by Trevor Murta. He's been impressive for Sean Connolly's this afternoon. A long, high ball in. Knocked down from an Arda Maidu man to a waiting Connolly's man, but that waiting, waiting Connolly's man was Daniel Reynolds, and he touches the ball on the ground, and the referee awards a free to Arda Maidu. It's uh, with uh, Dominic Lennon. Plays it out uh, to the far side towards Dylan Cody. He's way back in his own defence. He's pulled to ground. Or he goes to ground and he's hurt himself. <laughs> Arda might do take the free kick and go back with it. Dominic Lennon. John Keegan. John is fouled. Looks a bit infuriated, but the referee not going to take any stern action, any sterner action than award a free to Arda Maidu. Killian Fowl plays it over towards Mark Thompson, and uh, one might argue that Thompson had taken a lot of steps with it, but the referee said he was impeded. And it'll be a free kick for Arda Maidu and a chance for them to extend their lead. They lead 1 5 to 7 points. And have certainly been the, the better team for the last 20 minutes of the first half, certainly. Although out of it for the opening 10. Dylan Cody kicks. Dylan Cody scores. That's his third free of the afternoon. And. Uh, Arda Maidu now lead 1-6 to 7 points. <laughs> Stephen Murtha will once again take the kick out for the Connolly's men. Out past midfield towards the opposing 65 metre line. Well, it's won back by Sean Connolly's. Connor Blessington. Plays it inside to Trevor Murtha. And Murtha's ball is more hopeful than accurate. 
and there's a lot of Ardemoidu players swarming underneath that one and the player that comes away with it is Fergal Keenan and uh, Ardemoidu now will look to turn defence into attack it's with Paddy Keenan high ball from Paddy there's a lot of Connolly's men under this one ball could break for Killian Farrell ball eventually in a bit of a cluster on the ground a number of players going for it Keen Finnan thought he had got possession legally but I think before Keen Finnan had possession the referee had blown uh, for a throw ball a hot ball so the chance for Ardham I do not gone just yet Paddy Keenan is fouled he did very well wangled his way into a position there where the referee felt he was being fouled and a free kick to Ardham I do and a chance to extend that lead from two to three so Dylan Cody looking to bag his fourth point of the afternoon it's the post who's waiting for it Nobody except Connolly's men. And they walk it down that far sideline. Ball is played into uh, Dara Duggan, but the referee says he was charging, and Ardham, I do have a chance to break quickly. What can they do with this one? To the centre, Dylan Cody, looking for support, goes back outside towards Key and Finnan. Jinx one way, then the other, still Key and Finnan in possession. Back now with Paddy Keenan, the midfielder. Inside to Killian Fire, back to Paddy Keenan, lovely interchange of play. Inside to Connor Carl, the centre back. He's racing through. Did he take two hops? Referee says play on. Still with Ardham I do. Ball played back outside again. Chance for Killian Fire. Shoots! And has it got into the net? It has! A goal for Ardham I do. Let's have a look at that one again. You can see Killian Farrell gets possession. He goes for the score. Ref the goalkeeper jumps for it, but he doesn't jump high enough. And the ball ends up in the bottom right-hand corner of the net. A goal there for Killian Farrell. And now, Ardham I do move into a five-point lead. Two six to seven points. Ball is kicked out towards the middle of the field. Now, if the score stays like this, the only way that Ardham I do can stay in the championship is if, or I should say Sean Connolly's could stay in the championship, is if Ardham I do beat Cashel next weekend, because a win for Cashel as it stands would see them join Ardham I do. That's if it stays like this, but there's plenty of time left here this, this afternoon. Dominic Clennon wins possession, goes to ground, plays it out to the impressive John Keegan. So Connolly's will be hoping if the score remains the same and they lose this afternoon, they'll be hoping that uh, Ardham I do can beat Cashel next weekend and then both Ardham I do and Connolly's will advance. Still all to play for in this group. Ardham I do have been very dominant in the early stages of this second half. It's back with Paddy Keenan. Outside to the first half goal scorer, that's Emmett Donlan. Played inside again to Mark Thompson. Still Thompson. He's been busy, but this time he's dispossessed. And Connolly's have it back. Can they build from the back? Ball is played into Des Reynolds. Haven't seen much from Desi in this game so far, but uh, he can turn it on at any stage. Still Desi Reynolds. Good ball outside to Eugene Murta. Murta looking for support, none arriving. Has to go back towards his full back, Sean O'Sullivan. Still Sean O'Sullivan. Clever ball inside from O'Sullivan and a great turn from Joe Heaney. He needs to score a goal. It is a goal! A goal for Daniel Reynolds and for Sean Connolly's. Let's have a look at that again. Great take from Joe Heaney. Great turn. Notice the inrushing Daniel Reynolds and the easiest of tasks for Daniel Reynolds to palm that ball to the net. And all of a sudden we were maybe signing the death knell for Sean Connolly. Stuff right back in this game. 2-6 for Ardham I do. 1-7 for Sean Connolly's. Just two points between them. Ardham I do just one lapse in concentration. That's all it took for Connolly's to get themselves back into this game. A draw will be enough for Connolly's this afternoon to secure their place in the semi-finals of the Intermediate Championship. 
Ball is won back by Arda Maidu, but illegally so, says the referee, Fergie Kelly, and it did look like uh, there was an infringement when the ball was on the ground against the Connolly's number three, the impressive Sean O'Sullivan. The referee is calling, I think, in latest sub onto the field for Arda Maidu. Jared Farrell is coming in. Wearing number 22. And Mark Thompson, who had said had been busy in this second half, is replaced on the Arda Maidu side. Uh, he had done well, but precious little coming off his possession. I suppose that's the reason why Niall Sheridan has decided to pull the number 12 ashore and bring on the experienced Jared Farrell. Connolly's in possession, their own number 13, Kieran McKeown back helping it out his own defence, but they've given possession away. It's back with uh, Arda Maidu, Connor Carroll plays it back towards the uh, substitute Jared Farrell, into Dylan Cody, referee says a, a boot went in there from Dylan Cody along the ground and awards a free to Sean Connolly's. Ball is played in quickly, here's Daniel Reynolds, he's very fast, but that's a very good hand, very good hand there from Dylan Riley to slow down proceedings. Still Eugene Murta for Connolly's. Plays it inside towards Des Reynolds. And the referee says there's overcarrying. Must be against Desi Reynolds. Or I should say against Eugene Murta, who gave the ball into Reynolds because uh, Reynolds didn't seem to do anything wrong with it. But the referee adamant that the ball was overcarried and it will be a free out to Arda Moidu. So this game is starting to, to warm up somewhat. As today improves. Conor Carl, very influential for Arda Maitu at centre back with his foraging runs forward this afternoon. It's with, now with Shane Henry, skips away from his man, plays the ball outside to the onrushing Paddy Keenan. Very impressive in this uh, game so far. Plays a good ball inside a layoff towards uh, the number 17, I think it is. Uh, Ronan Keane, but Keane goes to ground and then. Just as Arda Maidu were about to retain possession, a boot came in on, uh, I think it's Kelly and Farrell, and the referee awards the simplest of frees to Arda Maidu and a chance for them to uh, extend their lead to three points. There were, of course, uh, five in front, but that goal for Sean Connolly's, which was scored by Daniel Reynolds, bringing the gap back to two, but they've, now, they've extended it again. Killian Farrell with his latest point. He's now scored 1-2 this afternoon. Paddy Ganley is coming into the Arda Moidu team. And Ronan Keane makes way. Paddy Ganley is in. Ronan Keane goes off. Keane did have a couple of chances, but lost possession in a couple of good positions uh, for Arda Maidu. So he pays the penalty and a chance for Paddy Ganley, perhaps, uh, to uh, make a claim for a starting spot next weekend against Cashel. That's a mistake over the far side by Dylan Cody. And the Connolly's man is fouled. Then he kicks out at the uh, Arda Maidu man, but the referee says play on. Free kick is taken quickly. It's in with Daniel Reynolds. High searching ball from Reynolds. It worked a couple of moments ago, but this time it's going to work again because Joe Heaney, and he's got support outside him if he wants to use it. Still Joe Heaney. Uh, it's a poor effort from Joe. He's had a number of chances this afternoon to shine. He scored one point in the first half, but he's missed two very simple chances since the break. And the gap remains at three. Two seven for Arda Moidu. One seven for Sean Connolly's. Brian Farrell takes the kick out and uh, a very clever one. And very easy for Arda Maidu to retain possession. Fergal Keenan over on the far side. Now in with Killian Farrell. Back outside towards Dylan Cody. Ball being constantly recycled. And eventually, it's going to end up with their number 14, Emmett Donlan, who plays it in to the impressive John Keegan. Keegan is racing through. Looked to throw that ball, but uh, in any case, Ardemoy do still have it. Killian Farr wins it. 
Wins it off to Paddy Keenan. Keenan over this side to Gerald Farrell. Still Gerald Farrell in possession. The number 22 just on the field. Plays it inside but gives it away. And Sean Kenny, who's been impressive for Sean Connolly since his introduction, he wins possession back into Stephen Lynch. Lynch playing it to Gregory Masterson. Masterson out towards Daniel Reynolds, who gets there first, but loses possession. The ball is spilled, and the very, very tight defending from Ardham, I do, continues. Although they did concede a goal, which was scored by Daniel Reynolds. They've been very resolute, and they've, uh, I suppose, they've withstood everything that Connolly's have thrown at them in this game so far. 2-7 to 1-7. Connor Carroll plays it back towards Dylan Cody. Cody goes to ground, gets back up. Ball is won back, however, by Thomas Kyo. Inside towards Dara Duggan. Now a chance for Connolly's to build. Is there anybody making a run inside? Yes, there is. It's Desi Reynolds, the county star, comes out the number six for Sean Connolly's. Wins possession. He had a chance to look for Joe Heaney. In the end, he looks for the post. And in the end, he's kicked it over. And that is the quality of Reynolds. Haven't seen much from him this afternoon since he scored that opening point. Uh, did spend a lot of the uh, remainder of the first half further away from goal. But now, in the second half, he's back in that danger zone gathers possession and scores a quite superb point. The, the Connolly's number six has lowered the gap to two. Hard by do, two seven. Sean Connolly's one eight and Seamus Quinn, the Connolly's manager, will be happy with that. Niall Keenan inside to Jared Farrell. Farrell plays one inside again. That is cut out by Connolly's and Connolly's finishing strong, finishing this third quarter strong. Can they get another score before the three-quarter mark? Ball booted in, but this time easy for Dominic Lennon. Could have taken his mark, but elects not to. Ball is now with uh, Emmett Donlan. He's playing very deep in the second half. The goal scorer, or one of the goal scorers uh, for Ardham, I do. It's now with Shane Henry. Shane has done very well since introduced. Quality player. Back to Paddy Ganley, normally very accurate. That's a wonderful kick from Paddy Ganley. And Paddy Ganley might be saying to the selectors, lads, I can do it if I get the ball. That's a brilliant score from Ganley, and uh, it would be fair to say it's the last action of the third quarter. It would be fair to say uh, that Ganley has really made a, a stake for a starting spot, a lovely sidestep. We'll just look at it again. And a lovely finish. Pinpoint accuracy and the right weight as well from Paddy Ganley. And uh, that point uh, extends the Ardemoy do lead back out to a goal. 2-8 to 1-8 at the end of quarter three as both teams go for a drop of Ishka. And uh, Ardemoy do will certainly be happy. They've extended their position in the second half. They now lead by three. But not over for Sean Connolly's. They've got 15 minutes to resurrect things here. And certainly in the latter stages of quarter three, Sean Connolly's uh, did look the better side for, uh, I suppose, a sustained period of time. And uh, if they can retain that uh, that positive approach and retain as much possession as, as they've had towards the end of the last quarter, then we should be in for a ding-dong final quarter. But as it stands, Ardham do leading here by a goal, 2-8 to 1-8. Remember, of course, we're streaming live to see Evening again, Clungish versus Mastrum. Last weekend, of course, Kilo defeated Clungish, so a defeat for Clungish this evening would see them exit the championship. But stern words from the Sean Connolly's manager, Seamus Quinn, to his charges. The man from Gortletra, <laughs> just over the Longford Leitrim border, issuing instructions to his team. As his his counterpart with Adam, I do, Niall Sheridan. And referee Fergie Kelly makes his way back out to the centre of the field. And within 30 seconds, we should be underway for the quarter-final of this entertaining game. I wouldn't say it's pulsating, but it might yet be. So the team's getting back into position. 
the last action of the third quarter was a, a superb point from Paddy Ganley. Ganley was selected to start at number 13. And I know uh, players playing with squad numbers nearly regularly these days, but nonetheless, Ganley will be disappointed not to start, and he showed exactly why with that fine point just before the end of quarter three. That's why Stephen Murta takes the kick out as quarter four gets underway. Murta kicks out towards the middle of the field. Gathered there by Emmett Donlan, blocked. Connolly's have it back, Trevor Murta, playing it inside towards the number 24, Connor Blessington. Blessington inside again to Eugene Murta. Murta plays it out towards uh, Gregory Masterson, back with Des Reynolds. The player running through the centre is Dara Duggan. Duggan goes out wide. Back with Des Reynolds again. It's in his range. Has he got the accuracy? Again, he has another wonderful kick from Desi Reynolds. His third point of the afternoon. Let's have a look at that one again. Reynolds getting possession over on the right-hand side and launching a beauty between the posts. And that beauty now means there are only two points between the sides once again. Kick out is taken quickly by Brian Farrell. He finds Dylan Riley. Riley has had plenty of possession for Arda Maidu this afternoon. Another man who's been on the ball quite a bit is John Keegan. Plays it outside towards Key and Finnan. Finnan very impressive in the first half. Plays a dangerous looking ball inside, but it's held by Stephen Murta. And Connolly's can build again. Arda Maidu will not be wanting to waste attacks like this latest one, allowing Connolly's to break. So, yeah. Sean O'Sullivan, good ball inside. Ah, that's a mighty kick from the number 15, Daniel Reynolds. Between the sticks again for the Connolly's men, and all of a sudden there is life in the old dog. Connolly's back to within a point. Arda Maidu 2 8. Sean Connolly's 1 10. And from a position where they look dead and buried, uh, midway through quarter three, they're now back within one point. 2 8 to 1 10. They have possession. Trevor Murta into Desi Reynolds, to Daniel Reynolds, back to Desi Reynolds. Ah, it's majestic from Desi Reynolds. A fourth point for him. What a lovely exchange of football between the brothers. Daniel giving it back to Desi, and he just, with his left boot, pops it over the black spot. That's his fourth point, and I think he's scored two with both feet this afternoon. Two at the left and two at the right for Desi. And now the sides are level, and Arda Moidu are the team that look and bother. Oh, five points came from the relentless this Dylan Cody, still Dylan Cody racing through, good chance for Cody, looks up and shoots, and that's a wonderful score from Dylan Cody. This is a terrific game these last few minutes, let's look at that once more. Dylan Cody just looked up and shot, and again, just about enough strength in the kick to take it over the black spot. Nothing Stephen Murthy could do about that one. Nothing Conley's could do about that one. And Arda do go back in front, 2-9 to 111. But here comes Desi Reynolds once more. Jinx one way, then goes left. Still Desi Reynolds, trying to make his way towards goal. Looks up and shoots, but that one I think is going to tag out to the right and wide. And Reynolds will be disappointed with that one. That was one for the right boot, I think. But in the end, the impressive Desi pulls it to the right. And he has really been impressive in the second half. He was quiet in quarter two. Uh, but he really has come to the force this half-time, scoring three absolute beauties. But it's Arda Maidu who lead by one, 2-9 to 111. Kick out is quick and short. And Fergal Keenan, not for the first time this afternoon, uh, retains possession over on the far side. Plays it inside to Dylan Cody who got the impressive uh, lead score for Arda Maidu just a couple of moments ago. Conor Carroll is fouled, says the referee, Fergal Kelly. They were calling for steps. But it's uh, Arda Maidu who retained possession. Gerald Farrell goes back outside towards John Keegan. Still John Keegan in possession. There's a 1-2 with Niall Keenan. Back with John Keegan again. 
Really has a great engine, has Keegan. Ball is played in towards Paddy Keenan. Killian Farrell lays it back outside to the busy John Keegan. 35 out from goal, and it looks like possession retention is what we're seeing from Arda Moidu, which is the right way to approach it and wait for an opportunity to happen inside. Here's Connor Carroll, 45 out from goal. Shane Henry, he's got support outside. Now, Killian Farrell will look for an opportunity to shoot here, I'm sure. He looks up, he kicks, that's an absolutely wonderful score from Killian Farrell. He scored 1-3 this afternoon. Just look the way he gathers possession, steps inside, looks up, and a highly elevated shot, almost over the black spot again. Very accurate kick it, kicking from Killian Farrell, and Arda Maidu now lead by two. Now Kevin Finnan is in for Arda Maidu, and his brother, Kean has got off. Arda Maidu leading by two points, 16-14, 210 to 1-11. John Keegan, great second half performance from him. He seems to be the, the man in the engine room for Arda Maidu in the second half. Kevin Finnan, his first taste of the action. Sean Connollys have also made a sub. Patrick McDonald has replaced Eugene Murta. Here come Arda Maidu once more. Kick from the centre back, Connor Carroll has gone to the left and it's gone wide. So a sub replacing a sub on the Connolly's team. Not too often you see it happening. But Eugene Murta had done quite well for Sean Connolly's, perhaps maybe running out of steam. Gave everything he had while he was on the pitch. Kick out from Stephen Murta towards the middle of the field, won by Dara Duggan. The big number eight is fouled. Referee says uh, also impeded. Not allowed to get space to take the free, so the ball has moved forward. And now it's quite scorable, really. It's about 47, 48 metres out, and uh, Stephen Lynch, who kicked three excellent frees in the first half, will be looking to make it four. So far for Sean Connolly's, the, the Reynolds brothers, Desi and Daniel, have scored 1-7 between them out of Sean Connolly's 1-11. Joe Heaney with the only point from play other than the Reynolds brothers, and Stephen Lynch with three points and a chance for his fourth. They're the scorers for Sean Connolly's this afternoon. 16 points to 14, two between the sides. Still plenty of time. Seven or eight minutes left in this game. And that latest effort has gone to the left and wide. Brian Fowle will take this latest kick out for Arda Moidu and uh, Sean Connolly's will be ruining that they didn't make the most of that latest attack. Brian Fowle kicks the ball out towards the middle of the field. It was won by one of his men, Dylan Cody, who lets possession go. Desi Reynolds has a free. Little bit of a fracas breaking out there outside the 45 metre line. Plenty of handbags. The referee, Fergal Kelly, will do well to settle this one down. Blows his whistle incessantly. Who's he going to speak to? That's the question. He's speaking to Ushin Horican, the uh, linesman, as we speak. And it'll be a free to the Connolly's men, but... Uh, there's really precious little that Ushin Harrikan can add to the conversation, but he does uh, single out Niall Keenan, the Ardham I do number eight, 
And that information has been passed to the referee, Fergie Kelly. Kelly now speaking with the Ardham, I do number eight. What action will he take? Look black from here. It's a black card for Niall Keenan, a black card. And there's arguments from Niall Sheridan that he didn't pull the player back. He didn't pull him to the ground, that it perhaps should have been a yellow card. That's a very good kick from the very impressive Stephen Lynch. Lands a beauty from 46, 47 metres out. 16 points now for Adam Idu, 15 for Sean Connolly's, 210 to 112. Wonderful kick, it must be said, from the very, very impressive Stephen Lynch. Brian Farrell, Dylan Riley. Dylan Riley is fouled. Adam I do have possession. The impressive John Keegan plays it out towards Kevin Finnan. Finnan lays it off towards uh, Paddy Keenan. Keenan back to Paddy Ganley. A little bit far out for a shot perhaps for Ganley. Gets it back to uh, Paddy Keenan who gives it in turn to Gerard Farrell on this near sideline. Gerard Farrell to Killian Farrell. Back inside to Paddy Keenan. Back inside to Gerard Farrell. Uh, a triangle of play from Ardham I do and in the end referee says that uh, Jared Farr was pushed to the ground and awards a free kick to the Ardham I do men and Killian Farr elects to leave it for Paddy Ganley Ganley one kick one point so far this afternoon he's looking to maintain his 100% record and if he can pop this one over Ardham I do's cushion will extend to two points bit of a delay in play here we're about three minutes from the end of normal time but there will be time added on by the referee Fergal Kelly I'm sure Paddy Ganley just inside the 45. He'll gain a couple of yards with this, I'm sure. He looks up, he kicks. That's a very, very good kick from Paddy Ganley. A second score for Paddy to add to his excellent point. The last score of quarter three was his first point. He's now got a second, and he extends the Ardemai do lead to two points. Touched on the ground, touched on the ground by the Connolly's 24, Connor Blessington, but not allowed to take the free quickly, where are them, I do. Paddy Ganley will perhaps try again, will he? It's just a couple of metres further out from where he was a minute or two ago, so Ganley perhaps within his range. Let's see what he can do with this one. Angles one across the centre of the defence for Sean Connolly's to deal with, which they have. Gregory Masterson plays it outside towards Conor Blessington. It's now with Masterson once more. Plays it inside. Dara Duggan. He's got Trevor Murt to one side of him. He's got uh, Sean O'Sullivan the other, but he goes to ground and the referee says that he's been fouled. The referee taking his time to award the free, but in the end, he doesn't allow a free to be taken quickly. Ding dong battle here in the Laurels. Ardham, I do 2.11, that's 17. Sean Conley's 1.12. We're almost at the end of normal time. So just the time that the referee, Fergal Kelly, now adds on for stoppages at the end of this really entertaining Intermediate Championship game. Of course, the Intermediate Championship here in Longford, sponsored by Miladies. Is that one going to have the range? No, it's kept in play. And Desi Reynolds is fouled, says the referee. Our coverage this afternoon, of course, is brought to you by Longford Tourism. Our live stream. The ladies are the sponsors of the Intermediate Championship. 
And with time up and only the time that referee Fergal Kelly deems appropriate to add on for stoppages and injuries, it's Arda Maidu who lead here by two, 2.11 to 1.12, so one point won't be enough for Sean Connolly's. They'll need two to guarantee their place in the semi-finals of the Intermediate Championship. They beat Cashel by a point last weekend. Very good kick from Daniel Reynolds. He's now scored 1-4 this afternoon. His brother Desi has scored 4. They've scored 1-8 out of 1-13. And the impressive Stephen Lynch has got 4 of the remaining 5. Sean Connolly's will rue a number of missed chances, particularly in this second half. Brian Farrell poised over the kick out for Arda Maidu. Towards the far sideline. Held by Dominic Clennon, who bursts his way through. Free kick to Arda Maidu on their own 45 metre line. Ball is held inside by Killian Farrell, a push in the back on the big number 18. He goes to ground, and I'm sure he'll stay down there for as long as he can because we're into that precious time that referee Fergie Kelly wants to add on for stoppages. But Farrell, in fairness to him, he's back up on his feet fairly quickly. He's a little bit, uh, a little bit the worse for wears after that uh, collision. But uh, Arda Maidu will have possession. Free kick is taken. And another push in the back there on Killian Farrell. And the referee awards a free kick to the Arda by two men. And again, Killian Farrell goes to ground. And again, he's back up on his feet fairly quickly. This one is certainly scorable. for the Arda Maidu men. And Killian Farrell with the opportunity to extend Arda Maidu, Arda Maidu's lead. 17-16 as we speak. Ah, it's a wonderful kick from Killian Farrell. He doubles the lead of Arda Maidu to two points. 2-12 to 113. Excellent performance, it must be said, from Killian Farrell, scoring 1-4 this afternoon for the Arda Maidu men. But Conleys are not gone yet. Here comes Dara Duggan, racing through the centre. He's got support over the far side, but doesn't see it in the form of Stephen Lynch. Back to Gregory Masterson. It's now a Conor Blessington. And there is the final whistle. Referee Fergal Kelly brings proceedings to a close here in the Laurels. And Ardham, I do get their championship campaign off to the perfect start. They, of course, will play Cashel next weekend. Cashel lost last weekend to Sean Connolly's, so certainly Sean Connolly's will be hoping that Ardham, I do, can defeat Cashel in the final group game, but it's in the hands of everyone. This group is not decided by any means. But certainly, the two-point win uh, for Ardham, I do, or perhaps putting it the other way, the two-point defeat for Sean Connolly's leaves them on a minus scoring average of minus one after two games, so they'll be looking for favours next weekend uh, from Arda Maidu. And Arda Maidu, despite winning this afternoon, if they lose by three points next weekend, they'll find themselves going out of the Intermediate Championship. But as it stands, they'll be very happy with their two-point win here this afternoon. If they can uh, draw or even lose by one next weekend, they'll be guaranteed a place in the Intermediate Championship semi-finals. But there you have it. The action uh, is over here in the Laurels. A very, very good Good win for Arda Maidu. They started very poorly and trailed by five points to one after ten minutes, but much the better side for much of the remainder of the game. And it's Arda Maidu who run out winners here in the Miladies Intermediate Football Championship. With a big thank you again to our sponsors, Longford Tourism. The final score, Arda Maidu, two goals and 12 points. Sean Connolly's one goal and 13 points. Do join us again this evening for live coverage of the Senior Football Championship meeting of Clungish and Mastro
Stadium and the action gets underway this evening at 6.30. We'll talk to you then.